A pilot's number one priority while operating an aircraft is to remain safe. One of the skill sets that increase the overall safety and situational awareness during a flight are collision avoidance techniques. By learning how to properly divide attention, scan for traffic, remain situationally aware throughout an entire flight, and understand how to safely fly around aircraft, pilots make the airspace safer and become more aware of their surroundings. A pilot must be able to divide their attention appropriately when operating an aircraft on the ground and in the air. At first, knowing what to focus attention on can seem challenging for newer pilots. But with time, practice, and assistance from a flight instructor, this skill will become second nature. Prior to beginning to taxi, the pilot must ensure they are familiar with the airport diagram, noting any hot spots or high traffic areas, and ensuring they abide by the instructions air traffic control has provided them. This can be accomplished with thorough crew and departure briefings. Pilots should write down all taxi clearances and read them back to the air traffic controllers to ensure they taxi along their assigned route and avoid any taxiway or runway incursions. When taxiing, pilots need to keep their eyes outside and not in the cockpit to best detect and react to any changes or hazards. By angling their head about 45 degrees to the left, a pilot can expand their view and utilize their peripheral vision to help detect any traffic or other collision hazards and quickly react. Additionally, maintaining a safe taxi speed allows the pilot enough time to react to any hazards, such as other aircraft or animals. When approaching intersections, pilots should visually clear the area in front of and on both sides of their aircraft to ensure there is no risk of collision with another aircraft or vehicle. Before crossing runways, ensure that the runway is clear of any landing or departing traffic and that air traffic control has cleared you to cross that specific runway. If taxiing at an uncontrolled airport, pilots must state their intentions on the Unicom frequency to alert other traffic. Pilots must also listen to other aircraft's radio calls to paint a mental picture as to where each aircraft is and what they intend on doing. This creates situational awareness and allows a pilot to prepare and plan for the safest taxiing possible. If at an unfamiliar airport, pilots can request a progressive taxi, where air traffic control provides the pilot with step-by-step -step instructions to taxi to the desired destination. If at any time a pilot becomes unsure of their clearance or their position on the airport, they must first confess they are disoriented or unsure of their clearance, and then should notify the air traffic controllers immediately and stop their taxi until the confusion is resolved. While in the air, pilots should spend 90% of the time looking outside the cockpit and 10% of the time cross-checking instruments and other in-cockpit tasks. This can be challenging at first for new pilots, especially when the aircraft is equipped with glass cockpit avionics, like Epic Flight Academy's G1000 equipped Skyhawks and Seminoles. Remember, the information displayed on the primary and multifunction flight displays are past information. It takes a few seconds for the aircraft's flight instruments and computers to interpret and display indications on the glass cockpit. Although this process is quick, the information displayed is a few seconds in the past. By looking outside the majority of the flight, pilots see the future and can make appropriate decisions and control inputs, which helps lessen the chance of a collision. By following these guidelines, pilots are able to detect and react to changes while on the ground or in the air effectively. When paired with proper scanning techniques, pilots will remain ahead of their aircraft and be ready to react accordingly. Every pilot must learn how to properly scan the airspace around them to ensure safety for themselves and the others around them. Effective scanning is accomplished through a series of short, regularly spaced eye movements. This means scanning the windscreen at 10 degree increments through the entire length of the windscreen, including below and above the airplane's flight path. Each 10 degree sector should be scanned for a second or two to allow the pilot's eyes to fully adjust and detect any objects in the sector before continuing to the next sector. Pilots should incorporate a quick glance at the aircraft's instruments into their scan to monitor and adjust the aircraft for the desired performance. Continuously scanning between near and far objects will also allow the pilot's eyes to appropriately focus and adjust. Staring in one area, known as fixation, can cause the pilot's scan to become ineffective or incomplete, which can lead to increased risk of a collision. Peripheral vision can be the most useful in spotting collision threats from other aircraft. Each time a scan is stopped and the eyes are refocused, 
The peripheral vision takes on more importance because it is through this element that movement is detected. Apparent movement is almost always the first perception of a collision threat, and probably the most important, because it is the discovery of a threat that triggers the events leading to proper evasive action. It is essential to remember, however, that if another aircraft appears to have no relative motion, it is likely to be on a collision course with you. If the other aircraft shows no lateral or vertical motion but is increasing in size, take immediate evasive action. Research has shown that the average person has a reaction time of 12.5 seconds. This means that a small or high speed object could pose a serious threat if some other means of detection other than see and avoid were not utilized, as it would take too long to react to avoid a collision. To help overcome this delay in action, Pilots should prepare for out-of-the-ordinary situations on the ground, so in the event that an actual collision hazard occurs, they can promptly react in a safe and effective manner. Pilots must be aware of any blind spots created by the anatomy of the human eye as well as the design of the aircraft and the altitude or position of the aircraft. As a pilot scans outside of an aircraft at night, they should use their peripheral vision to help detect moving objects and avoid staring directly at any other aircraft as they may disappear from sight due to the night blind spot associated with human eyes. This is due to the ineffectiveness of the light-sensitive nerves called cones that are found in the eye. Cones are responsible for perceiving color and are found on the inside of the center of the retina. Another type of light-sensitive nerve, rods, exist in the eye and are found around the edge of the retina. They provide peripheral and night vision. Due to the location of the rods on the retina, Humans must use their peripheral vision at night to detect moving objects. In both high and low wing aircraft, the wings are our primary blind spot. This is because it is difficult to see above and behind on high wing aircraft, or below and behind on low wing aircraft. Pilots must conduct clearing turns, which allow the pilot to scan the area above and below the aircraft before conducting any maneuvers. One of the most important areas to clear prior to conducting a maneuver is behind the aircraft. Other parts of the aircraft, such as window posts, can obstruct a large area of the sky. Pilots should move their head in a manner that allows them to scan beyond any blind spots created by the aircraft's parts. During climbs, including takeoffs, pilots must lower the nose of the aircraft in order to see past the nose and look for other aircraft or objects. Epic Flight Academy students and instructors should climb out from takeoff at VY. Then, upon reaching 1,000 feet above ground level, lower the nose and conduct a cruise climb at 85 knots indicated airspeed. The reduction of nose up pitch allows the pilot to expand their range of sight while climbing. The use of traffic information services and automatic dependent surveillance broadcast systems can also increase a pilot's situational awareness when used correctly. A pilot should not stare at their displays to detect traffic, but rather use the information displayed to be aware of other aircraft in the vicinity. Using traffic information such as altitude, direction, and aircraft speed can assist a pilot in identifying and avoiding traffic. Pilots must remember that although these systems are helpful, they are not perfect. In many areas, pilots are not required to have either a transponder or automatic dependent surveillance broadcast in their aircraft which means not every aircraft will be displayed to a pilot on their avionics. Advanced avionics should be supplemental to scanning and remaining situationally aware, not the primary method of collision avoidance. When operating near other aircraft, it is important that the pilot fully understands the right-of-way rules outlined in Federal Aviation Regulation Part 91113. Aircraft are given the right-of-way based on their flight characteristics and circumstances. When a pilot is operating near other aircraft that have the right of way, it is the pilot's responsibility to give way to that aircraft, and may not pass over, under, or ahead of it unless well clear of the aircraft with the right of way. The aircraft that always has the right of way is an aircraft in distress or in an emergency situation. Since the aircraft is in a time-sensitive circumstance, other pilots must remain well clear of the aircraft in distress to allow them to best meet the needs of their emergency. A balloon has the right of way over any other category of aircraft due to the inability to quickly maneuver. A glider has the right of way over an airship, powered parachute, weight shift control aircraft, airplane, or rotorcraft. This is due to the fact that gliders do not have a source of thrust such as an engine.
An aircraft towing or refueling other aircrafts has the right of way over all other engine driven aircraft. An airship or blimp has the right of way over a powered parachute, weight shift control aircraft, airplane or rotorcraft as they need more time and space to react to any changes. When aircraft are approaching each other head on, or nearly so, each pilot of each aircraft must alter course to the right to remain clear of the incoming aircraft. If an aircraft is being overtaken or passed, the aircraft being passed has the right of way. The pilot of an overtaking aircraft must alter their course to the right to pass well clear of the other aircraft. Aircraft, while on the final approach to land or while landing, have the right of way over other aircraft in flight or operating on the surface. When two or more aircraft are approaching an airport for the purpose of landing, the aircraft at the lower altitude has the right of way. But the pilot must not take advantage of this rule to cut in front of another aircraft which is on final approach to land or to overtake that aircraft. By using these guidelines to ensure the appropriate aircraft has the right of way at all times, pilots can help eliminate collision risks and provide the necessary spacing and separation necessary for safe flying. For more information on collision avoidance techniques, pilots should refer to the Advisory Circular 90-48D, the Aeronautical Information Manual, Chapter 8-1-6. The Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, Chapter 14, and the Airplane Flying Handbook, Chapter 1. Be sure to like our video and subscribe for more epic content. And while you're here, check out some of our more recent videos and playlists.